Hello campers and welcome to the Tonglor Coliseum with myself Anthony and my cameraman Bob. Today we're going to be doing movement in DBMM. When I first started playing war games it was all Napoleonics, rigid moves, straight lines. Then World War II came along and it was all very flexible. Now in DBMM it was something in between. So when I was first given a stick I didn't know what to do. So today we have a video to explain all those moves. So for today's demonstration we have six Roman legionaries who are blades in DBMM and four Sogdian cavalry who are of course cavalry. These okay, were painted by Nash's painting service and very nice they are too. Straight ahead is a very simple manoeuvre. You have your group of infantry, for example. Place the heavy infantry stick, okay, 160 paces long, at the front corner, and move the group of infantry to the other end of the stick, like so. For cavalry, it's the same. Take the cavalry stick, 240 paces, front corner, just there and move the cavalry like so. So I have moved all four cavalry straight ahead the full cavalry move. I have not dropped off any as I move forward. However if I wanted to I could move part of the group forward and leave some behind at the start like this. Here's the starting position again. I only move three forward this time. And I leave one behind. And if I want to, I can move him separately. Again, take the cavalry stick, put it on the front corner, and he will now go off in that direction, thus. Thus. Of course, you don't have to move in groups. If you want to move each element individually, you can do so, because an element is the smallest body of men in the game. As such, it is very maneuverable and can move in any direction up to its maximum distance and end up facing in any direction. So, let's have a look at these four cavalry. I will start by moving this one on the end over here. Notice, I always move from the front corner that moves the furthest. So that front corner will come to here and that is one move. Now I will move this one, okay? He will come over here. Again, the front corner doesn't have to go even the full move. He can come back a bit, I can rotate a bit and I can leave him there. Third one, if I want to, I can move sideways. Again, notice I measure from the front corner that moves the furthest. He comes over here. There is the front corner mark, okay, and I can rotate and have him facing this way. If I want to, I can rotate him a bit more, have him facing slightly backwards. And finally, if I want to, I can even move backwards. Again, the front corner, okay, that moves the furthest is where I measure. He turns around and will end up there like that. Here we have a column. A column is a group one element wide. Now, if you want to expand from a column into a line, the front element must remain stationary. And then the other elements will move to the sides, provided no element moves further than its maximum move distance. So in the case of the blade, the front two, or second and third one will become uh, part of the front line. These ones will then move over to here, and this one can fill in the space at the back. Now, for the cavalry, because the cavalry have a longer move distance, this one can come all the way out to here. This one can fill in that gap there. And this one can still get all the way out to here. And the cavalry can make a wider line with one move.
maybe we want to change from a line into a column. In this case, any element in the line can move forwards and other elements will fall in behind. So here I'm going to move this one forwards, goes forward the full move, this one slides across, goes in behind, this one slides across, goes in behind, and the final one also slide across and go in behind. And there we have a column. The second way to move from line into column is for your lead element to pivot around its front corner up to 90 degrees. So in this case, I'm going to pivot around this element's front corner. Okay, and he's gonna go the full 90 degrees. Now, okay, he still has to make his full move, so the full move will end up there. And the other elements will fall in behind, as in the first example. In order to face the flank, we can also use the special column to line maneuver. We do this, we're having the front element rotate about its front corner and moving everything else into position from there. So the front element rotates about the front corner, the second element will fall in behind, the third element will extend the line and so will the fourth and then the fifth and sixth extend the line further. And notice the end of the line is not okay, beyond the end of the column. And we can do exactly the same thing with cavalry. So front corner, rotate about the front corner. Second one, third one, and the last one. Again, not extending beyond the original end of the column. Sometimes we will want to change facing without changing formation. This can be achieved through a wheel. In the wheel, the inside corner of the line is the anchor. It remains stationary. The outside corner is where we measure. So, okay, a wheel for cavalry can be up to there like that. The whole line can wheel. But we may only want to wheel part of the maneuver. So we may wheel up to here and then the rest of the move can still be straight ahead. So in this case after the wheel around the anchor everything then moves straight forward the rest of the move. A group can only make one wheel in one move unless it is a column. Columns can make multiple wheels in the same move. For example, if I would like to wheel this column, I can do so here. Lead element goes off, pivots around the front corner, moves forward, pivots again around here and ends up there. Second one, okay, third one, fourth one will fall in behind they will move forward to the same pivot point, wheel, move forward again, okay, to the same pivot point again, and then fall in behind. Next one, forwards, wheel, forwards, doesn't quite get to the pivot point, and then step, ends its move there. Third one, fourth one, same again, come into here, last one, or last pair, will just get up to there. And now I have a kinky column. In this situation, the cavalry are having kittens about the advancing blades. Therefore, they decide to turn and run. In this case, they, we will do an 180. Everything turns around first. and then we will make a move away. And there is the end of the move. Now, a 180 degree turn can only be made 
once per turn. If the cavalry want to turn back, they will have to move again and make another turn. So, let's do that. Move again, and then turn around. And there we are. Here's a little scenario to demonstrate some of these moves in action. Notice we have a column of legionaries facing a line of cavalry. The legionary commander is quite confident that his men who outnumber the cavalry can burst through their line and rout the cavalry. So, he decides to just move straight ahead. Little does he know what is about to befall his men. Okay, now he's moved closer to the cavalry. The cavalry commander responds by charging in, but he only sends three of his men. They move up, contact, and line up. The last one has plenty of move, he will come round on the flank and hit the legionary column on the side. The legionary column is now in a pretty predicament. They are outflanked on both sides and okay, it would be quite easy for the cavalry to get around, perhaps even into their rear. Certainly, these two are going to die. The new commander of the legion is not such a fool and in this case in the same scenario he will not go straight ahead instead he will expand his column to present a wider front to the cavalry the cavalry commander seeing this will attempt to outflank by going off in column this way now back in his turn the legionary commander will want to keep the cavalry to the front and so will wheel his men around. Seeing that it's going to be hard to get to the front and side of the legion, the cavalry general now decides to form into a line again. In response, the legion will expand their line on both sides. At this point, the cavalry commander decides he's not going to get a significant advantage, so decides to turn tail and get out while he can. So, in this scenario, there is no conclusive outcome, but at least the legionaries didn't die a painful death.